Now let's talk about breeding methods. And there are two main uh, breeding methods that are known in livestock breeding. And we talk about the first one being natural mating. Natural mating involves the use of bulls for breeding. And these are live bulls that the farmers can keep on the farm. We have a number of advantages that come with this uh, breeding method. One of the advantages is that the farmer wouldn't need to uh, worry much in observation of heat as the bull is allowed or introduced to the animals that need to be uh, um, mated with or served. And therefore, there is a, a minimal uh, observation that needs to be uh, done to the animals. However, the farmer needs to keep note on the dates and the expected time that the bulls, uh, that, the, that a cow is expected to be on heat and introduce the bull uh, to the cows at the right time. Remember, the bull will not be kept together with the other cows. The bull needs to be kept securely in a separate paddock and in a separate uh, housing until the right time uh, for the bull to be introduced to the cow. One of the other advantages of using natural mating and the use of bulls is that it is cheap and reduces on the costs uh, of um, um, serving the animals. Therefore, uh, farmers would uh, need to consider this uh, if they really feel they are not uh, able to afford the other methods of uh, breeding, which is artificial insemination. It is also important to note that the use of bulls, uh, however much uh, may be um, effective and relied upon by the smallholder farmer, it is not the recommended uh, way of breeding in the modern uh, animal breeding because of a number of reasons. First, the, when the bulls um, are used for breeding, they may easily transmit diseases to the cows. And therefore, before a farmer decides to use a bull, the bull must be observed uh, to see whether it is in good health and uh, to also make sure that it doesn't transmit any uh, diseases to the, um, uh, to the cows and also to the offsprings. It is also important for the farmer to select a bull that is superior. And in most cases, the bulls that are selected or that are used for breeding are not uh, proven or the, the genetic uh, merit and quality has not been determined. And therefore, the farmer may not really be sure on what is going to be transmitted or what is being introduced uh, into the herd uh, as uh, whether it is uh, superior or better genetics that they expect uh, to have to improve their herd. One of the other disadvantages is that the bulls, which most of them will weigh close to a ton, may also be harmful to the animals and break the animals. So it is not a wise uh, advice to introduce a bull to animals because it may also break the animals and uh, endanger them, thus uh, affecting the animal's life and, and, and production. There are a number of considerations that have to be in mind when using the bulls. Uh, first, the bulls uh, need to be uh, used uh, properly on the farm uh, with the proper information and record keeping to avoid inbreeding. Normally, if a bull is being used in a group, it should only be uh, introduced to animals with proper uh, record and information so that that bull is available for at least, uh, for at most two years before it is replaced um, and introduced uh, to a different um, herd. And um, that is a good way of uh, preventing inbreeding. Now let's talk about artificial insemination, 
which is um, a modern way of uh, uh, mating and breeding that is recommended by uh, most uh, uh, farmers who are breeding. And uh, artificial insemination is the introduction of uh, bull semen into the tract, uh, the reproductive tract of a, of a cow. Uh, and the bull semen should be viable and uh, should be in, conserved in proper manner to enable the conception to take place. Therefore, uh, farmers are, uh, ought to be careful on when and where they are sourcing for genetics because they, are, they have to be of good quality to enable a successful uh, mating. There are a number of uh, advantages of using AI and uh, farmers need to know that they need to make good selection while looking for bulls uh, to be inseminate, to, to inseminate their cows. One of the advantages is that uh, artificial insemination provides room for farmers to choose and uh, access good quality genetics because uh, most of the bulls distributed by many genetic companies have been proven and the, their genetic merit has been determined. Therefore, uh, farmers have an opportunity to select the bull that best fits uh, their needs uh, that will help them improve their animals. For any successful artificial insemination process, there are a number of things that have to be considered. The skill. Artificial insemination requires um, uh, involvement of a qualified artificial uh, inseminator who has the skill and uh, knowledge on proper animal uh, insemination. And the farmers have to be uh, aware to choose the right and qualified uh, practitioner to serve their animals. One of the other uh, uh, major consideration for any successful artificial insemination service is availability. The services should be readily available for the animals to be served on the right time and to conceive uh, at the expected time. Therefore, the farmers need to make sure that uh, the semen is available from the nearby vendors and the, they should also be prepared to know which uh, bulls they need to select to be served on the animals. Farmers also have to be good at detecting the heat in dairy cows. And therefore, uh, for the process to be effective, farmers ought to inform the uh, artificial insemination uh, practitioner within the right time and to have animals served uh, within the right period. It can be costly for a farmer if uh, they buy superior genetics that uh, they select, uh, yet when they want to be served to the animals, the animals are not in a position to conceive or to, um, they're not able to conceive uh, from the genetics that are served to them. One other thing is the cost of insemination. Farmers ought to identify the best genetics at a, an affordable cost. One of the advice that farmers ought to uh, consider is knowing how to access these genetics at a cheaper and affordable uh, way. It, is, it has been uh, a challenge to most smallholder farmers uh, shying away from use of AI because of the cost that are involved. So a farmer has to be very keen and consider all the other requirements before um, calling an AI uh, practitioner to serve their animals. Farmers are always advised to work as groups. And if they work as groups, it's easier for them to identify and to source for genetics in large quantities from the vendors. This will help in reduction of cost and will also uh, easier the process of accessing the genetics and the semen from within their, um, uh, their location. We also have other causes of um, AI failure, which farmers need to be keen and 
take note of. AI can succeed or fail because of human factors. Then uh, the, the human factors relate to the skills that the farm, the, the, the farm, the farmer, and the AI practitioner need to have. Both need to be well informed about their roles and make sure that uh, they all work uh, at making sure that the animal is served and it's served in the right way uh, at the right time. We have a um, skill that the farmer needs to have and that is heat detection. They need to feed the animals uh, properly in the right way and also treat any uh, diseases that um, occur on the animals to help them uh, conceive when they are inseminated. The inseminator, the inseminator also need to be uh, skilled and to know how to do their job. So farmers ought to identify uh, qualified and competent uh, artificial insemination uh, uh, practitioners. Again, uh, we may have artificial uh, insemination uh, officers not handling the semen in the right way. This may lead to contamination and uh, may uh, even make the semen not to uh, survive uh, at the point of insemination. Again, the inseminators have to uh, make sure that the containers they're using are clean. They should not expose the semen uh, to sunlight and they should consider um, to do that job in the right and professional way. One other cause of AI failure is the animal itself. You may find that the animal may not show heat signs at the right time because of poor health, because of diseases, because of infertility, because of the genetic makeup. And the farmer has to note from the time uh, the, calf, uh, the, the, the calf is growing up and from the time it will need to be served, to observe these changes and determine whether um, they need to uh, treat the animal and give enough feeds and um, provide the required uh, 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 feeds and uh, requirements for the, for the cow to be able to conceive and to be able to show heat signs at the required time. We also have um, a failure coming due to genetics. We may have uh, AI suppliers who have poor handling of genetics. And if the genetics are not handled in a proper manner, the AI service will not be successful. Therefore, uh, farmers ought to liaise with uh, the required and competent uh, professionals who are inseminators to avail uh, quality genetics that is actually going to, uh, uh, to be mated with the animal to be able to conceive.